from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise. It's The Cube, covering Console Connect Live 2015. Sponsored by Console, here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live in San Francisco, this is theCUBE Silicon Angle's flagship program where we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. We are here at Console Connect 2015. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Frick. We're Al Bergio, CEO of IIX and Console Inc. Welcome back to theCUBE. Congratulations, great event. Thank you. Thank you, it's been awesome. So, you guys are holding this event. Kind of, we had Jay Adelson earlier on. Revolution, you mentioned. This is the first time in history. Explain what's going on for the folks watching about the event and this new way to do connections for yeah, connectivity. Yeah. I, I would definitely say it's a, an evolution of what's happened here with, uh, with enterprise movement to the cloud. Um, there's become a dependency on connectivity. And so with, with public internet, for example, um, people call it public internet, some people call it best efforts internet and so forth. It's, it's really, it's why we're all here. I mean, we, we've, it's created new economies, it's created new opportunities, it's changed how we've communicated. Uh, it's also challenged business and both in a good way and a bad way. And so as a result of that, as you know, what's undeniable now is the enterprise movement to the cloud. We're using more cloud services, this is cloud infrastructure, this is SaaS applications, it's also important communication with business partners and so forth. And what we're realizing that um, as the internet is growing, as our concerns around security and performance and so forth. And so for the, Many use cases, it's, it's great, but when something becomes business critical, for example, cloud services, um, there's been a movement around this sort of evolution of how one can connect. It's, we've seen AWS with AWS mm -hmm. Direct Connect, we've seen Microsoft with Azure Express Route, we've seen Google with Google Cloud Interconnect and others. The list isn't that extensive, and so there's a reason for that. But there's this a movement um, to bring more visibility to alternatives. Um, these companies acknowledging that, hey, you can directly connect to these cloud services, but there's complexity with that. There's an expectation amongst uh, enterprises now that are moving to the cloud that in many cases they would need to become a network operator in order to be able to do all of the provisioning, yeah. all of that fun stuff. It's interesting, the whole right. consumerization trend has hit IT first. Now you're seeing the networkification where they have to become their own autonomous system, That's as right. Jay was saying. So, that is a big deal because again, they, the developers are writing these, these apps now. It's, you had a lot of APIs it, out there. It's a new model developing. Absolutely. I mean, for, for many, it's, it's a trivial thing. It's, you know, they've been, you know, some individuals have been, some experts have been doing this for years. But as more enterprises are, are you know, moving to the cloud for the first time and realizing that, hey, we now have to step outside of our organization to understand how things work and become familiar with things like DGP and ASN and all these acronyms, it's it's it just changes perspective. It's, they start to realize that well, the better mode of maybe connectivity is more complicated, and maybe it's a little bit more expensive in terms of how it's evolved. And so, you know, there's there's this uh, purgatory that's happened <laughs> with enterprises, right? We, we 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 want to continue to see more cloud adoption, and so we basically said, how could we help with cloud enablement? And and we. Yeah. Focused it's on interesting. Last extracting year, extracting complexity. Last year at the event, we kind of geeked out because we all oh, interconnections. Yeah. Because it's really fascinating. You think about the, the the big things that have gone on. Apple has an event showing the live streaming. MLB is spinning out its own separate company. So people in the media business know the consumers know Netflix. They can see all this value. That's right. But one thing that's interesting about console this year that caught my attention was, it's not just the technology and what it can provide an enterprise, which is all great. People should check that out but how hard it is on scale the people equation, right? So you mentioned, you know, that you, there's not a lot of people out there that actually know how to do all this stuff. So talk about what you guys solved. I think that's fascinating, this whole social network. Component. Sure, sure. If, well, if we look at just sort of the history of how software has been created and used and so forth, it's, it's it, among the things that it's done is, is extract complexity um, to make businesses more productivity, to allow for more transactional activity, and so on and so forth. Um, this is done typically, you know, it's occurred sort of higher up the stack. The analogy I referred to today was sort of FTP. Enterprises knew how to spell FTP, you know, they had an FTP client on, the, on their desktop or what have you, and 
transferred files, but thanks to companies like Box, among many others now, um, you know, collaboration, we don't need to know how to spell FTP anymore. They've, they've helped support collaboration, they've extracted that complexity, but the enterprise in that case knew how to spell FTP, and they still gravitated yeah. toward a simple UI uh, and, and a better experience. Um, with interconnection or direct connect, um, there's other acronyms, you know, comparable to that sort of FTP analogy. In this case, it's things like BGP and so on and so forth that in many cases the enterprise have never heard of before um, or haven't heard of it in the sense of how it would need to be applied when directly connecting to somebody else. And so it's important stuff. Yeah. But let's use software to crack, I always think, I always extract of, that complexity. I always think about who would buy you. Like when I look at companies, <laughs> I'm like, you yeah, know, who would buy you guys? You guys are very valuable. And there's a lot of suspects out there that would be interested in, in what you guys are doing. One, VMware. Uh, I was talking to Sanjay Poonin last week, and he was sharing some numbers on the huge success AirWatch has been for their acquisition. Business mobility, just little use cases are transforming functionality. And here with a direct connect, that kind of seems to be scaling that effort up, right? Yeah, that, like, am I getting that right? No, absolutely. We, we've basically been focused on creating what we refer to as a non-discriminatory platform. Any organization can be, become part of the ecosystem. Um, it's not like anything else that you see out there where it's sort of a, a one-to-many. Uh, there's one, let's say, cloud company and then a, a static method of allowing others to connect to it. We focused on you know, any organization, really. It, it could be a cloud company, a SaaS company, to be part of this platform. Um, Connecting directly is social. You know, the need for you and I to have a conversation, say, hey, you want to connect our businesses together? You may be busy, maybe it's next yeah. week we have a any time. So we looked at you know, the fact that it's social and how social has evolved and how that can help, basically help revolutionize how, how organizations directly connect to one another. And so we applied that, those type of techniques in, in how we built uh, console as well. And so, um, you know, obviously I'm biased, but <laughs> I think it's safe to assume, I believe what we've created here is very valuable. So. It, was there a technical catalyst? Or was it just kind of all these things kind of coming together? Was it critical mass of enterprise cloud application? You know, it, it, what, what, what got you here um, to kind of, with, with in, in retrospect, looking back, it looks like a relatively simple concept, right? Make connecting easier, connect the people and the machines easier. But what was it that really got you here from people just doing sure. direct connect or, you know, you know, I, I appreciate the observation in that it, it seems simple. Um, that you know that that you know leads me to believe that we're, we're, we've done the right thing. Um, but obviously, it's not simple. It's very complicated in terms of what we've created. There's not necessarily one problem that needed to be solved. Um, there was a few sort of solutions that needed to be created and have them work in in, in unison. And so There's some pain points out there, obvious pain yeah. points. And DDoS. so we we basically had to um, build a team. Right, of individuals with expertise in various different areas, um, get that collaboration going internally and help our company evolve. Um, these include individuals that have expertise, not just in, in a couple years of experience, but in many cases, I mean, a Dr. Few Peering wrote the book. <laughs> right, right. Um, Very well our, our, our CTO as well, uh, Paul Gamp. Um, it's funny, when you hear sort of software defined networking, the two terms that sort of stand out are software and networking. And Paul has you know, domain experience in both areas. Right. Uh, Paul was part of the team that launched yeah. the first ISP in Japan. Mm -hmm. uh, he then went to help go run APNIC, one of the five registries in the world. So if you want a public IP address or an AS number, you, you know, if you're in the Asia Pacific region, you'd go to APNIC, for example. Uh, and then from there, he started his 12-year career at Red Hat. He was vice president of worldwide software engineering. He knows open source. Yeah, absolutely. He and and grew a team to over 1,000 software developers worldwide. Um, today we have a lot of ex Red Hatters in our company, uh, among you know m among other organizations, and so very you know proud of where we've uh, how we've been able to evolve. You got a lot of wind at your back. What are the key mega trends? Obviously, we, you know la again last week, fresh off VMworld, we heard and we're seeing this at Oracle and other the big whales out there. End to end systems are critical, certainly at the software, the fucking cloud, but at the plumbing level, at the network level, I mean, this is serious business. End to end is sure. the value. What, is that one of the tailwinds you have? What other you know, winds are at your back? DDoS, obviously security, share? There, there's definitely pain points that are not just staying static, but evolving and growing. Um, from, a, from a technology perspective, um, you know, we are big believers in open source. So uh, we've also helped uh, support new open source projects like the Cloud Rudder project. 
uh, among others. And so we believe in collaboration. That's really helped us innovate uh, and will help us continue to innovate. And so as a result of that, um, you know, that this working together with community has really helped our business get to where it is today. Right, talk about the status of the company, number of employees, funding round just did, what your goals are, uh, growth. Sure, absolutely. So we, we've had uh, significant growth in, in our organizational headcount. We went from a year ago, uh, two countries, we now, uh, where we had offices, we're now uh, five offices in four countries. Um, we're about 100 people now in the company. Uh, so significant growth in headcount will continue to grow there as well. Uh, great growth in obviously revenue, great growth in customer ecosystem. Um, but you know, as they say, it's only the beginning. So a lot more work ahead of us. And console, your expectations for this is what? Console Inc. We we really with console the application. It's 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 an enterprise application that we've created that's focused around among other things fostering an ecosystem much like other social platforms. So our expectation is that with time it will, um, in, for, for its relative market, uh, target market, it will, it will go viral. Well, Jay Adelson's licking his chops. He's got his checkbook guy, he's a VC now. He sees great innovation, very complimentary to what you guys are doing. So, I mean, he's pretty excited. Yeah, the, the other thing I think is interesting, it's always about market timing, right? Being, being too early is, is almost worse than being, being too late, because then you look back later and you're like, oh, we're yeah, out of it's there. It's very sad. But it's interesting, <laughs> you know, we had Tim Nichols on earlier, and he said that, that the demand is coming now from the customers, you know, not necessarily the big customers that maybe already knew that they need to direct connect or the relationships or their, their uh, traffic is so big that there was really no alternative, but he's really hearing kind of a groundswell of people looking for this type of service. So it feels like your market timing is good. It's, I think so as well. I mean, we, we founded the company initially in 2011 and we've been witness, um, we've been focused, but also witness to sort of an evolution of, of direct connect. And so, uh, definitely believe that this is the right time. We have under our belt uh, many years of experience, um, not just by virtue of the company, but the members of the, the, of the team. And so, uh, what we're seeing is that this is definitely the right time for us uh, to be doing what we're doing. We have great customers, great partners, many of which are here today on stage with us, being very supportive, believing in the same common, that same view that we have, and so, um, you obviously can't do this stuff on your own, and we've very, been very fortunate to line the company with, with great individuals and, and other great organizations. Al, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your insight. We're, we're psyched to be here. You know, we pride ourselves on looking for the next innovation. We started big data, uh, start with public cloud. You're hitting on an area that is nuanced in the market. It's not well known, not a lot of press are here, but it can explode, huge opportunity certainly for companies in innovation. In DevOps, Ops Dev, whatever you want to call sure. it. So congratulations. Um, final word for you, I'd like you to share for the folks watching live and then on demand. What's the show, who couldn't make it here today? What is this show about? What's happening here, what's the vibe? There's a common view that more is needed for cloud enablement, and uh, we've been able to help unveil console today uh, to uh, help address what uh, is we believe is um, needed to help further cloud enablement, to helping businesses directly connect to business critical cloud applications, SaaS applications, cloud infrastructure, other partners, the ability to bypass the public internet regardless of where they're located. And it's really exciting for us. Thank you for, for being here as well. Appreciate uh, it. And appreciate your time. Alberto, CEO of IAX and Consult Inc. here at Consult Connect 2015, live in San Francisco. We'll be back after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Thanks for watching, we'll be right back.